Does your audience even want to hear your message? Find out on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by FreshBooks. Accounting and bookkeeping mistakes destroy thousands of small businesses every single day. Bookkeeping doesn't have to be hard. Turn to the number one invoicing software for small businesses. Start for free today at servenomaster.com backslash FreshBooks. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. Most businesses, books, ideas, blogs, stories, videos, they're altars to the ego of the person who created them. We start off with an idea and decide that everyone else needs to hear it. Everyone else needs our invention. This is the ego-first business model, and so many businesses follow it, and eventually they collapse. One of the biggest struggles new authors have is writing and releasing a book, and then no one wants to read it. It's painful, and it's stressful. You can't figure out what went wrong. So many times when I'm coaching or answering emails, people say to me, But it's such a good idea, why don't people want it? I've seen some amazing ideas that I think are brilliant go nowhere. It doesn't matter if I think it's brilliant, it matters if people wanna buy it, if people wanna hear it. When you start your business with your idea, with your invention, with what you want for yourself, and ignore your market, you can end up struggling through the school of hard knocks. I try to watch every single television show that's about investing. I watch shows where people come in and buy in and rebuild companies. I watch shows where people pitch their inventions. I watch all the variations from lots of different countries. That's pretty much the only type of TV show I really like to watch. And I notice many people, they have an idea, they start this invention, spend years with it, and they've never showed it to anyone. They've never sold one. People tell them all the time, oh, I think it's a great invention. And that that's nice, but it's honestly worthless. The only thing that matters is when people vote with their money. Plenty of people tell me they like an idea, it's great. But until they buy it, They don't really believe it. This is one of the reasons they get confirmation bias in small group tests. They bring in people to check out a new product and they say, oh yeah, I would buy this. I would buy this is not the same thing as actually buying it. We want to start at the very beginning of our business model with finding out what people want and then giving that to them. I know many different ways to make money online. I know several large scale business operations. I know how to start things that are very flashy and very technical. I could teach that stuff. I could teach that methodology. It's what I used to teach five or six years ago, a different way of building a business. But most of my audience doesn't want that. I found out what my audience wants. I found out what is most helpful, most valuable to people like you when building a business, what you're really looking for. My entire structure, what I teach is all about content marketing. This is an approach to marketing that is very methodical. It may seem at first like it's the turtle, the tortoise and the hare. It seems like it's a little bit slow at first. But with each step, you get closer and closer, and you end up making a lot more money than that hair ever imagined. This is a methodical but also unstoppable force. As long as you follow the methodology I teach, the systems and the steps that I share with you, every day you'll get one step closer to that fortune that you deserve. Quitting your job, leaving things behind, taking control of your financial destiny, paying off your debts, all of those things happen by following methodology. I'm teaching people how to build businesses. I know that's what my audience wants because I ask my audience all the time. I respond to emails all the time. I pay attention to what people say to me all the time. I connect with my list. Whatever market you want to enter into, find out what people are asking about. If you want to write romance novels, go to the forums where people talk about romance novels and talk about their favorite novels. Read what they have to say. People will tell you, I'm only interested in romance novels that are modern day. I'm only interested in romance novels where the main character is military. Military, no thanks. I only like romance novels where the main character is a shapeshifter. You can find out what your audience wants in any market. People talk online all the time. There are several places to go to find out and get a seat of what people really want to hear, what people really want and need to know about. I personally, as a guy who releases most of my products on Amazon right now, that's where I start my research. I look to see if people buy books on the topic. Recently, And I mentioned this in my new book that's coming out in a few weeks. Recently, a client came to me to start working on a book on tinnitus. 
And I said, oh, that's interesting. I've never thought of it as a big market for people who have ringing in their ears. It's kind of a medical problem. I don't know a lot about it, but I said, okay, I'll do some research for you and see what we can find out and put together. I took a look on Amazon. There's a couple of good books on tinnitus. There's about two really good ones. And I saw 12 or 15, what I would say, terrible or garbage books. They're books that have a lot of bad reviews. If a book has three good reviews and 15 bad reviews, that's a big red flag for me. Most of the books had really, really bad reviews. I could tell they were written by people that wanted to get into the tinnitus market for some reason and wrote books that didn't work, which is really unforgivable because that's a real problem. Man, like someone with tinnitus has a pain or a ring in their ear all the time. It's affecting their way of life. And trying to make a quick buck off people with that situation is not something I'm into. This is why when I talk about my extensive research, I was, man, I spent so much time just reading medical papers during my next phase, trying to understand current research and see what the technology is to really get a grasp of where technology is right now and where cures are and the best solutions to the problem. Most people don't do that level of research. They just take a list from one website, turn it into a book and throw it on Amazon. So I looked at the two really good books on Amazon and neither of them are making any money. They're both very low, probably selling one or two copies a week. This tells me there's no audience or no interest in solving this problem on Amazon. Some ideas are huge on other platforms, but dead on Amazon. People don't want to learn it there. Sometimes it's the format. People want to learn to swim from a movie, not a book. Understanding where to find your audience is important. When you research, if there's no book on Amazon that people are buying on the topic, if there's no book on the topic at all, that's a big red flag. That's a sign that people aren't interested. It might be a sign that people simply aren't interested on Amazon, but it might be a sign of something bigger. So then you want to start looking at Google, looking at Bing, if you prefer that as your search engine, looking at forums and looking for blogs. When you find a blog on your topic, you can gather a lot of information. What I look for is how many active members does this blog have? How often are people writing messages? I look for the most popular posts. Sometimes you visit a blog and it looks very popular. I used to do research for some of my products for women for dating on a particular blog. And it looks so busy. You see, oh, we've got 100,000 posts, all these things. It was very popular a while ago. I noticed because I track the frequency of posts, how often people reply, that the site actually died and became useless for me. I no longer use it as a research source. When you're looking at a forum, you want to look for how often are people replying and how many replies have there been in the last 24 hours. If there have only been two replies in the last 24 hours, it's a dead site. I want to see hundreds of comments in the last 24 hours. That tells you that it's a thriving and active community and that the data you can pull from it is important and valuable. If you can't find any forum where there's a lot of activity on your topic, that's a sign not that many people are interested in it. There are certain things that very small number of people care about. Only people with tinnitus care about it. And so it's a problem that affects a small number of people and only a small number of them then look for a solution in different places online. When you're targeting a really small space, that's a sign to reconsider before you dive into it. Does the market exist? Does the audience exist? Are there enough people interested in what you want to talk about, what you want to teach about to support you financially? You might have the perfect cure for tinnitus and that's wonderful. And if you can really help people, great. I don't want to stop you. Just realize that it's a small number of people. So there's a small footprint you can create online. There's a small opportunity for profit. You're very limited. There are about 10 to 15 blogs that are kind of similar to mine. None of them are a direct match, but there are blogs about building an online business. There are blogs about quitting your job. And there are blogs about traveling around the world and kind of living in these amazing foreign locations or traveling full time, being a digital nomad. If none of those blogs existed, I would have hesitated a lot more to start this. When you look at other blogs that are similar to your idea or that are in the same space you want to approach, take a look at how much traffic they get. You can go to alexa.com and see their rankings. If they're getting no traffic, that's a sign that no one cares. That's a sign that the audience isn't interested in your topic. Topics come and go. Things that were popular in the past are not always popular now. Being aware of the changing winds of time is very important. Some of the blogs that I compete with are dead. They haven't put out a new post in two or three years. It happens. This is a sign that something went wrong for that business. You want to notice that as well. How frequently are they posting? How much traffic are they getting? How relevant are they? How active is their following? All of these things tell you, is there an audience that wants your message? There might be some amazing blogs. You see the blog, you go, wow, this blog is so beautiful, amazing design. Look at all these posts. But if you look at their traffic numbers and they're getting no traffic, that's a sign they have a beautiful blog that no one looks at. Pay attention to these things. The next phase, once you've gone through this research phase, is to test the waters. Share your idea with people and see how they react. There's several ways you can do this. 
There's a method where you post an ad with your product for sale before you make your product, before you release your idea. And then when people go to check out, it says you're out of stock. And you just look to see how many people try to even check out. This is a great way to test the market. You only have to spend about 100 bucks, and you can find out if there's any interest in the idea. With a little bit of testing, you can run tests on Facebook, tests on Google. There's a lot of platforms that allow you to do this, and that's the basic idea. You show your idea to a group of people, offer them the opportunity to buy it, and rather than saying, would you buy it, you create a buy button. You don't tell them it's not ready yet, and when people don't click on it, it lets you know, oh man, no one wants to buy it. Something must be wrong with my marketing, my message, or my idea. Testing your idea, dabbling with your idea, sharing with people, seeing how they react is very important. Sometimes people come to me with an idea and I can tell instantly that I have a bad feeling about it. Sometimes I'm 80% sure that the idea is terrible, so I don't want to totally kill the person because perhaps I'm the outlier that doesn't see the great opportunity, but you're in this situation where you don't want to hurt someone's feelings, but their idea isn't very good. It's a tough balance to be in. I try to maintain my integrity and tell the person the truth without hurting their feelings, but it could be really hard. And when you're friends with someone or it's a member of your family or it's a close relative and they have a terrible idea, it's hard to tell them their face, hey, your idea is terrible. You're going to lose all your money. You're going to end up in the poorhouse. You're going to hurt your family if you follow this idea. It's tough to say that stuff. And people do that. They make these horrible decisions. They create these products. And then I see people seeking investment. And they want to lower the cost of production. They talk to their the comp, their factory. And if they buy 10, it's expensive. But if they buy 2,000, they get a great savings. Buy the 10 and sell them first. See if you can sell 10 at a break even. And then try and sell 100, a little bit of a profit. Confirm that the audience has any interest. If you have a physical product idea, get 10 made, throw them up on Amazon, see what happens. If you you sell all 10, you know you got a winner. Sometimes you have an idea that doesn't exist yet. You've created an invention to solve a problem. It's something brand new. It's cutting edge. You have a brand new approach to things. There's a difference between being first to market and educating a market. Educating a market is where you have to tell people about the problem and then tell them about your solution. A great example of this is a series of commercials on television for toothpaste where they teach you about acid erosion. They start off the commercial telling you about this problem you have in your teeth that I'm pretty sure doesn't even exist. I think it's completely made up. They put a person in a doctor's coat, but it says at the bottom that it's an actor. It's not a real doctor. They then educate you about this problem and then try to sell you something at the end. You may have noticed you see this commercial a lot. I don't know if it's still running, but recently a couple years ago was running all the time they spent millions and millions of dollars on this campaign to educate a market costs a lot of money i had never heard of this problem before outside in fact i've never heard of this problem outside of this commercial i've never heard a dentist say to me oh he looks like you got acid erosion i don't think it's real because no dentist has ever said it to me and i visited dentists in a dozen countries it's never come up either that or i'm immune to this disease even though i don't use that toothpaste educating a market costs a great deal of money and a great deal of effort When you want to fix a problem, if someone has a problem and you have a solution to it, they say it takes seven contacts or seven messages to get on their radar. If they don't know they have the problem, you have to use those first seven messages to convince them they have the problem. It can take 14, 21, 5,000 contacts to take them through the sequence of you have a problem, you need to fix it, here's how we fix it. It's very hard to educate a market. It costs a great deal of money. That's when you build a business that costs millions of dollars to get it out there. That's not the type of business that I teach. First to market is where people have a problem and you found a unique solution. That's the difference. If they don't know they have the problem, you are going to suffer. If they're using a different solution and yours is better, it can be kind of tough. You're in between these two places. If the current solution, people all use it and it works okay and yours is just a little bit better, it can be very hard to break in. Then you're in a tougher spot. Finding that balance when that's your little zone is hard. And I can't give you generic advice because each case is very different. Seeing how hard it would be to educate the market or to transition the market to your slight improvement. If you made a paperclip that worked 10% better but costed 10% more, could you get it to succeed? I don't know. I'm not a paperclip expert. I'm not an office supplies expert. So sometimes you have to go to the expert in that exact field to figure out what's possible and run some test campaigns. When you create your idea, you launch it and you start putting it out there, you may discover that you made a mistake. In fact, you'll probably discover that you made a mistake and you'll have to go through a point where you pivot. This business model, Serve No Master, was originally targeted at guys in their early 20s. My original idea when I first set up the website several years ago, that's what I was thinking about. Guys in their 20s, graduating college, basically guys like me when I was younger. That's who I was really targeting. I then started building up this site. During that time, I then had my children, my first two children, Definitely going to be having more. We're just waiting until we're ready for the next one. But my 
market shifted. I discovered that the majority of my audience is women, and I'm pretty sure close to 100%, if at least 80% of the people who listen to this podcast, follow me, read my blog post, anything, have children. My audience is almost all late 20s and up, really more and more of my audience is late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s. That discovery means I needed to pivot my message. Things that are cool to 20 year olds are not cool to people older. In fact, I also pivot my message because I don't want to communicate in that way anymore. I don't want to talk about action movies and all those things I used to like when I was younger. The things I like now, they've just changed and the way I want to communicate now changes. So my original vision, to give you a core idea for the Serve No Master logo was the idea of like two samurais fighting and one killing the other one. Very violent, very aggressive, very physical. Something that would appeal to the people who buy mixed martial arts t-shirts, even though they're not fighters. That's not my target demo anymore. I've pivoted my business to fit where I want to take my business and to fit my audience. I've softened my message, matured my message, and created a much stronger business by pivoting. And you'll reach a moment where you discover what you're doing isn't quite working. You need to pivot your business a little bit. In order to determine the pivot you need to take, you want to survey your audience. If you're a member of my following, you've been a member for a while, every once in a while I send out an email where I send you to a survey. I send you to a series of five, seven, ten questions asking different things. And sometimes I send one question surveys for some of my lists. What's your biggest problem right now? What's your biggest struggle right now? What's holding you back from where you want to be right now? That's a one question survey. The answers you get will tell you, here's my problem, this. I sent out this type of email to my parenting followers recently, and most of the responses I got said the biggest problem was terrible twos. I don't have to guess what the next book I need to write about parenting is, do I? They've told me what they want. When you need to pivot, survey your audience, and they will tell you where you need to take the business. As long as you have enough of an audience there, people listening to you but who won't buy your products, you can just ask them and they'll tell you. I have a series of 10 products that I want to launch through Serve No Master already outlined. The order in which I release those products is completely based on the response I get from my audience. Do you want to learn how to make videos? Do you want to learn how to write nonfiction? Do you want to learn how to market on Facebook? I ask questions and the response I get tells me which ones to work on in that order. I know what I want to make, but the order is determined by connecting my audience. You can hit a point where you're in trouble. Your audience is no longer interested in you. Nothing's selling. You're feeling overwhelmed. You know you have to pivot. And it feels like everything's collapsed around you. Your business has turned into ashes. If you pivot by listening to your audience, by surveying your audience to find out what they want, you'll discover that your business is probably 95% of the way there. You just had a little bit off in your messaging. Pivot. Give the people what they want. And like a phoenix rising from the ashes, you can create a message that your audience actually wants and generate the revenue that you deserve. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back next Tuesday with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you Tuesday. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Serve No Master podcast. Follow me at facebook.com backslash serve no master.